The Courting by Mina Kinney, Chapter 19, Revenge, Jacob's Point of View. I was frantically running around the place. I had given Hecka Hayes present, and she would start in the morning to bring it to him. I was searching for my new dress shoes, and they just disappeared. I had given Toppy a day off, so I was on my own. Ah, I'm going crazy! I screamed and threw a box around the room. Wait. That sounded like shoes. I picked up the box and started jumping around. I found them! I found them! How come that you are so happy about finding a box of shoes? I heard a voice behind me, and I quickly turned around and saw my... And saw my mother standing there, my father behind her carrying the trunks. I was searching the, for them for a half an hour. It's good to see you home, mother, father. I hug mother while father decided to go upstairs and put away their stuff. Now come and sit down. Tell me everything that's happened. Mother set herself down on the kitchen chair while taking off her shoes. Not much. The company is going good. The war has started, but it isn't as extreme as it was the first time. But I think it will soon be. I have been to the Halloween ball from the Prince Grant family. I will not tell my mother about the courting. She would go crazy about it. Are you two ready to go to the Christmas party? I asked Mom and took out my shoes. New shoes, Draco. You hate shopping for shoes. What's going on? Fuck. Didn't think of that. Well, I bought them because... Carissa, love, guess what I found? I heard father. I turned to his direction and saw him waving some parchment paper. I dare you, old man. He gave the paper to mother and whispered in my ear. Revenge is mine. You little... (laughs) Draco, you're courting Avila? Mother asked while looking through my papers. Father had entered my room, stolen my present plans. I had made my order list, the courting rules, and the momentary favorites list of Harry's. I was more furious than I had ever been. You're on the favorites list? She asked while looking through my personal stuff. Suddenly, she jumped me and whispered in my ear, You are better than your father had been. At least she didn't demand J. I can already see the little kids running around. There goes all my hopes. I'm so proud of you, Draco. I push my mother off of me and guide them to the fireplace. We need to get going. We don't want to be late. Will they be there? Mother asked when I had already threw the flu powder. When I arrived, I quickly scurried away from the fireplace and mingled into the group. Now it was time to wish Harry a Merry Christmas before other suitors were faster. I grabbed some champagne on the go, and I was looking for a man with white skin. Lord Grand was overprotective of his son, and he was faster to find than Tiny Harry. He was standing with Lady Brown, his family behind him. Everyone had a glass already, just not Harry, so he wasn't fond of alcohol. I placed my second glass on some random table and came closer to the group. Harry wore a gorgeous dress and dark green that complemented his figure. He was talking to two men. One seemed a little older than him, and that's when I heard one of them. I heard one of them say, "They noticed me and turned in my direction." Merry Christmas to you, I said and kissed Harry's hand. I wanted to greet the younger men with him the same way, but I noticed the promise ring and didn't. Want to seem like a threat to his betrothed. I want to leave this party as, as one person, not torn into tiny pieces by an angry dominant. A merry, a merry Christmas to you too, Jaco. Harry greeted me. I identified his companions. One was Neville Longbottom. 
the heir to the Augustus Longbottom and one of the eldest Vila enforcers' families. Maybe he was Harry's enforcer, but I wouldn't risk asking. The other one was definitely part of the Weasley family, with the red hair and facial facial features of Molly Weasley. Hello, my name is Jacob Malfoy, Pierre Vila. Neville Longbottom, Vila Enforcer, Charlie Weasley, Wizard. I gave my hand to Charlie, but left Neville in peace after he was poured to Charlie rather forcefully. I think we two will be good friends. Harry had to talk to other suitors soon after, so he left, and Neville needed to go to the bathroom, so I was right. And I decided to talk to Charlie a little longer. He was a wizard coming from a blood traitor family. I didn't want anything to happen to him, now that I considered him a potential friend. And what do you do for a living? I asked. I train with dragons in Romania. They use a special kind of magic. Really elemental based. Of course, other creatures, such as fairies, use elemental based magic. But dragon magic can be taught practically to such low levels as mine. I feel like I'm getting back to something that was ripped away from me a long time ago. I nodded, understanding what he meant. Many light, pure bloods were creatures, squibs, angry at others that didn't lose the creature parts. It seems that either the Weasleys or Prefuel family had elements near ancestors. I looked into Harry's direction, checking up on him. Of course, Neville had found his place behind him. If you're looking at Neville, Charlie started and I chuckled a little bit. I'm quoting Harry at the moment. You shouldn't be concerned over Neville. The look he gave you are the ones of true love. I assured him and Charlie seemed relieved. It's just that I'm eight years older than him. Sometimes I think I might make him give up all his memories teenagers normally make. That he desires someone that will go on wild parties with him, sneak into his room so his parents won't notice them. The dragon trainer told me. I think Neville is a lot more mature than many others his age. He has a rather adventurous job, so a partner that he that has settled down already, that he can come home to, is the right thing for him. Then Charlie nodded and gave me a man hug. That was the motivation I needed, he said, and we were about to drink another sip from the champagne when Charlie's eyes grew wide. Fuck! He gripped his wand, and I did the same thing before turning around. They were Harry and Neville cornered by some men. Fuckers touching my Harry. I grabbed my wand tighter, and Charlie and I approached the group. Wands up. What's going on here? I asked. Three men, three men stood around the boys. They looked angry. Those two thought they could refuse us, one of them said. And why do you think they should do whatever you want them to do? Charlie asked. They asked them, already angrier than before. Those sub-sluts should always do what we dominants want. There's only one use. Another laughed. That was it. I tried to keep it together, but that was it. My inner Vila was so angry that my wings came out and ripped my robes. How about you three fuck off now, or this won't be the end? I said, my voice dropping a bit. Two look intimidated by me, the last one not so much. The room was completely silent, then I heard it. Clunk. Two of them were down. Tush! And the last one fell on his face. Neville had thrown the heads of the two of them together, and Harry had kicked the other's ass. We petrified them and scurried over to the submissives. 
Is everything okay? I asked Harry, and he nodded his head. He looked up and behind me. Then I turned and saw that my wings were still out. I'm so sorry my ankle took over a little bit. It's just that I hate such disappointing persons. I think they're disgusting. I apologize and retract my wings. No problem. Thank you for saving me. What's going on here? I heard a loud voice yell, and Harry left my hug. Everything's fine now, Father. Please don't make a scene, Harry pleaded. Neville had called some guards from the Vila elders that would pick up the idiots. Then the lady of the house arrived. <laughs> we are sorry for the scene, Lady Brown, I said. It's okay, as long as nobody important was hurt, she said, giving glances at the culprits. She was a dominant vampire. Together with her husband, she had been fighting for subs and dominant equality in all the way, in, <laughs> in all of the realms. I stepped away from the scenery when a house elf popped next to me and gave me a piece of paper. Run, sincerely, father. I immediately ducked and told Charlie we should be leaving. Mother must have spotted me and I was better off when Harry and Mother didn't meet too soon. I apparated home, hoping to be safe here. As expected, my parents arrived soon after. That is Jacob's love entrance. Such a cute boy. Indeed, go upstairs and change. I'll come soon, Father said, and sent Mother away. Then he set himself down next to me. You better not fuck this up, son. Your mother is thinking about all the things she will be teaching her grandchildren. And close your doors with a better spell. I was able to open it without magic. Then father and I had a little father-son talk before going to bed. And I knew even when father told me that mother was straining his nerves, he loved every bit of her. End of chapter 19. I'm sorry for how poor this recording was. Sinuses, it's cold. Winter, it's terrible. If you like this, leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for chapter 20.